Hello, my name is Kim Shaw and I'm the Quality Assurance Officer for the State of Oklahoma Blue Thumb Water Quality Education Program. And quality assurance for Blue Thumb, we have multiple facets that are built into the program to make our volunteers data a lot more credible and believable. Part of this is we have quality assurance sessions four times a year where we either make up standard solutions and our volunteers test it and hopefully they come up with the answer that we created the standard solution to be. The other times we have quality assurance sessions out on site and that's where we will have the volunteers go through the motions of where and how do they fill their dissolved oxygen bottles, um, where and how do they test for the water temperature, air temperature, how do they fill out the front of the data sheet, what is the procedure that they fix their dissolved oxygen samples out at the creek site. Um, so that's part of the quality assurance that we have built into the program. We also have for the creek testings, we ask that the volunteers test their creek water twice because you can do a test once, come up with an answer, and is that answer right? Is that wrong? We don't know. But if they test the creek water a second time and they come up with a very comparable, if not the same answer, then that's going to make the data a lot more believable and credible. So that's another part of the quality assurance that we have built into our program. And so I um, review everybody's data that comes uh, through our office and making certain that they are getting uh, replicate answers on their different testings and if anything's high um, we, report, we report it to the Department of Environmental Quality or if some numbers are a little bit off, if our volunteers are not re achieving repeatability then we'll know to work with them at the next quality assurance session. So that's a little bit about uh, Blue Thumb and quality assurance and so now I will uh, tell you and instruct you on how to prepare your working area for whenever you come back in from the creek. You're going to be bringing your dissolved oxygen, your fixed um, dissolved oxygen samples, and your sample water bottle. This is a bottle that you collected out at the creek. And um, But first of all, you need to protect the area that you're going to be working on. So whether this is your kitchen table, uh, just a table like this, um, anything that's not an official lab bench where you they normally do chemicals and ex experiments and stuff like that on, you do need to protect your tabletop that you're working on. So we usually recommend a plastic, so this is like a plastic trash bag, cut off the bottom of it, put this down. You can use newsprint, um, pretty much just anything to cover your tabletop so you're not putting stains or uh, reagents right on the table that you're going to be cooking your meal on maybe later on today. That would not be good. So use a plastic or newsprint to put down. Then within your big test kit there should be a roll of paper towels. All you need is one placemat size paper towel. This is going to be a little bit of absorption but um, also just to give you a white background for some of the tests there are going to be colorization and you need a white background and stuff like that. Then put your paper towels away because the paper towels you do not ever want to use with uh, wiping on any of the equipment because they can scratch the equipment and also the paper towels are not sanitary at all so um, you don't want to disturb any of the tests that you might be um, performing and stuff like that. Plus you don't want to be wasteful. You can go through a whole, ro whole roll of paper towels in one uh, testing episode. So all you need is one placemat size and put the paper towels away. Then what you'll need to get out, you should have taken a liquid waste container out to the creek site with you because there is a little bit of liquid waste whenever you're fixing your dissolved oxygen samples. So get out your liquid waste bottle and your funnel. You will also need to have your sample water bottle out. You will also need a squirt bottle with deionized water. Within the pencil case in your big Rubbermaid test kit, you will need to get out one or both of the syringes. Sometimes they come in a protective plastic casing, sometimes they don't, but you do not need this. That's just for storage. And you will also need to get out your magic glass stirring rod. That's going to be very important as well. So we have our tabletop 
pretty much spread out. So what you'll need to do is rinse off the pretty much about three-fourths ends of the glass stir rod with your deionized water. And you're doing this over your liquid waste container. Just thoroughly rinse that off. Then open up your sample water bottle and insert the, wrist, the rinsed end of the stir rod into your sample water bottle. And just leave it there because anytime um, you always want to stir your sample before you take any sort of liquid out of that. So the stirring is just going to remix, resuspend anything that might have settled in your sample water bottle. Anything that's heavier is, all, is of course going to sink down to the bottom. So you want a really nice homogenized mixture whenever you're doing any of your testing. So always stir really well before you get a syringe full of water out. Then with your syringe, go ahead and rinse off the tip and about half of that with deionized water. And then um, you also want to rinse with this with creek water as well. So I usually go ahead and get a big full syringe of water and then empty that into your liquid waste. The rinsing of the syringe this way is just going to coat the inside of the syringe with the water that you have just collected and it's just good lab practices for the rest of the testings that you're going to perform um, after this. It is very important to always put on your PPE, your personal protection equipment, before you do any of the testings. That's Blue Thumb, we're all about safety, so our PPEs, that's going to be eyewear, so the goggles that are in your test kit, and also gloves. Gloves we have in various sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. Very important, so you're not getting chemicals in your eyes and not on your hands either. And then also within the test kit, we do give you a packet of instructions. And these will take you through it step by step, but even sometimes reading somebody else's instructions, it's a kind of a little bit difficult. So that is why we are doing these videos that will hopefully help you out and take you through them step by step so you can visually see how you should be performing the tests.